Hello and welcome to another update. In this one I'll be covering the latest developments throughout the frontline starting out in the direction of Saparisha where in direction of Robotina and Verbova the Ukrainian forces continue their offensive operations but are so far unable to push through since the last capture here to the southwest of Robotine, where the Ukrainian forces captured further positions within the trenches to the south of Robotine. However, the final parts of the trenches is still under Russian control. This is the area where there's essentially a three-line circular trench. So the Russian forces still have positions within that, and they are directly interfering in the Ukrainian advances here to the south of Robotene. If the Ukrainian forces manage to capture this final part, they can start advancing in the direction of Novorokopivka. The high ground on the eastern side begins around the first patch here, as well as in the direction of Novorokopivka itself, in the first patches here to the south of the Ukrainian positions. So essentially, if the Ukrainian forces want to push from the eastern positions, they need to push further westwards of their current positions here by the main line of defense of the Russian forces, or if they want to push through the high ground, they have to go through and capture the forest patches here to the south of Robotina. However, for this, they will most likely go southwards from the current positions. The Ukrainian forces don't really need to capture this final part before moving southwards, so most likely they are directing the majority of their forces here to the south southern position of Robotina and pushing the direction of Novorokopivka. This is all to gain control over the heights here in the northern directions of the village so that they can use their forces here in the eastern parts and move in this direction. This will then allow the Ukrainian forces to push on the Russian positions to the north of Novorokopivka without facing them directly. With this, they can also push directly into the village of Novorokopivka and advance southwards into the direction of the heights from a position from the heights itself. So they will be fighting on a neutral position. As for the direction of Verbova, according to the latest reports from the Russian sources fighting in this direction, they are saying that the Ukrainian forces launched three attacks in the direction of the trenches here to the west of Verbova, as well as the village itself. So in this direction from the northwestern parts of the trenches. So the Ukrainian forces are here constantly launching assaults every day, but over the past 24 hours has been an extra two results. So the Russian forces are here being heavily pressured by the Ukrainian forces as the Ukrainian forces launches assaults after assaults trying to capture the Russian positions. So the current Ukrainian objective here is to capture the trenches here to the west of Verbova. If the Ukrainian forces manage to capture these trenches, they will hold some position which will allow them to establish uh, areas where the Ukrainian forces can cross over the anti-tank ditches with their armored vehicles and tanks. If they are able to cross over, they'll start to launch further operations in the direction of Verbova, capturing the village, and then moving further eastwards and southwards in the direction of Ochere Tuvate and in the direction of Romanivsky as well as Tarasivka. So the Ukrainian current objective is number one to capture the trenches here to the west of Verbova number two to capture Verbova itself, and number three to then push onwards in three directions towards Ojere Tuvate, as well as Rovanivske and Tarasivka. So the Ukrainian forces are here in the process of a three-step operation, capture the trenches, capture Verbova, and push onwards to Tarasivka, Rovanivske and Ojere Tuvate. And if we take a look at Deep State Map's map, we see that this is no easy task. If the Ukrainian forces manage to capture the trenches to the west of Verbova and Verbova itself, they still have to go through yet another set of trenches in between the two areas of Ojeretovate and Verbova. If they go in the direction of Tarasivka and Romanivske, they still have to go through layer after layer of defenses. The Russian forces have built no stops in this direction. There's layer of defense after layer of defense. If they instead focus on the Novorokopivka direction through to Ilchenkove and further south, they again have to push through layer after layer after layer of defenses before reaching Tokmak. So the Russian forces have so many layers of defenses and the Ukrainian forces have about a month left of their offensive. It took them three months to cover this area right here. So it is very unlikely that the Ukrainian forces are able to break through multiple layers of Russian defenses, as well as multiple kilometers of mines of both anti-personnel mines and anti-tank mines. The current Ukrainian strategy of using infantry-based assaults to push through and advance is a very slow one, and the Ukrainian forces 
are currently using this tactic because the Russian forces mainly has anti-tank mines in these forward positions. However, the Russian forces then started using more anti-personnel mines rather than anti-tank mines in these new positions. And this is not that they replaced the anti-tank mines with anti-personnel mines, but they added an extra kilometer of anti-personnel mines. So the Russian forces are in a position where they have about four kilometers of minefields, of which about one kilometer is anti-personnel mines and the rest are anti-tank mines. So the Ukrainian forces would have to first launch armored assaults, after which they would launch infantry-based assaults for a much longer distance. If they just launch armored assaults through the whole area, they will have to go through multiple kilometers and lines of defense, including anti-tank mines. If they just lose infantry-based assaults, they would have to go through a large swath of anti-personnel mines before moving on to the anti-tank mines. So the best option would be to switch, but that is also a very difficult situation and very slow one because we have multiple kilometers of anti-tank mines. So if we have to take things into a long-term perspective, there's no easy solution for the Ukrainian forces. If they manage to capture Verbova, the trenches, and even this middle trench here, that would be the best outcome prior to the fall season starting. The reason for this is if they do not capture this, then they would be in a vulnerable position and the Russian forces could essentially just launch a counterattack, cutting off the road to the northeast of Kopani, cutting off Robotine and forcing the Ukrainian forces out, negating all the gains they have received through this whole time. But if they do manage to capture it, then they would have some forward positions they can hold on to. There would be a lot of direct fire and attrition throughout the whole fall and winter and spring periods before they start and restart their offensives in the next summer. The Ukrainian forces are here in a very difficult position as no matter what decision they take, whether it be to retreat, then they would have spent these three months for nothing. Or if they want to stay, then they're in a difficult position for the next couple of seasons. So in either case, the Ukrainian forces are in a difficult position. If they want to get a win out of this, then they would need to launch some sort of massive offensive and actually manage to break through a couple of these lines. Otherwise, it will be very difficult to sell this offensive as a success. Then move on to the next part of the front, which is here by Velika Novoselka, the Romevsky ledge area. The only development here is that the Ukrainian forces managed to negate some of the recent Russian counterattack gains north of Pryotne. So fighting is retreating to the Pryotne direction. As for the Bakhmut direction, we see here that there's conflicting information about Andreevka. According to pro-Ukrainian sources, the Ukrainian forces managed to capture Andreevka. And according to pro-Russian sources, they have not. There has been no evidence put forward about either claim. But what we do see is that there is this drawn picture from a couple of days ago, about a week ago actually. And in this, we see that there is no Andreevka. This is about the same time we heard the news of Russia withdrawing from Andreevka. So there is no village here. There's a lot of fighting around it. But it's very difficult to actually claim you have control over something that doesn't exist. So until one side takes a selfie in the middle of a graveyard, then we do not see any developments in this area. But what we do know is that the fighting is going on, the Russians are by the railways and the Ukrainian forces are moving through the railways here to the south. So most likely we'll see a formal capture of Andreevka once the Ukrainians have managed to push the Russian forces out of these railways. To the north of Soledad, where here the Russian forces managed to push the Ukrainian forces back to the east of Vesele. So there's been some minor offensive operations by the Russian forces in this direction. In other news, there seems to be uh, a spotting of M1 Abrams tanks in the direction of Germany, moving in the direction of northeast of Magdeburg, as we can see in these pictures here. She located by a river and a photo taken by the railways in this direction, moving in the direction of Ukraine. So there seems to be an exaggerated waiting time for these Abrams tanks. Most likely the delay was reported just to confuse the Russian forces. But it seems that the Abrams tanks are soon to be sent to Ukraine as they are being moved through Germany. The possibility of the Ukrainian forces not having trained on these tanks yet could also be one if they are being sent to Poland so the Ukrainian forces can train on them and then after a couple of months then be sent to Ukraine. That is also a possibility. Either way, these Abrams are actually going to arrive. If anyone was ever doubting that, then here is the evidence. And that is going to be all for this update. Thank you all for watching and have a great day.